Today with the incredible Rebecca Carlin, beautiful singer, violin player, composer, band leader. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, uh, where is thanks for being here? Oh, good to see you, darling. Awesome. So I want to ask you, tell us about your connection with the violin. Like, when did it come into your life? So, <laughs> well, I started playing when I was four. Really? Wow. And played till I was about six. And then we moved to Australia from Sweden yeah. and had a bit of a 10-year break, actually, yeah, from wow. playing it. Yeah. But then picked it up again and then studied violin both here, classical violin yeah. both here in Brisbane yeah. and also back in Stockholm. Wow. And then, yeah. Cool. And you got musicians in the family. I do. Yep. So, yeah, my father was a jazz guitarist wow. and my brother is, as you know yeah, he's well, a jazz course. musician too yeah, well, course, um, awesome. and so yeah then I went down the classical um, training sort of yeah. path with yeah. the violin but then pretty much digressed when I met you and started yeah. hanging out with Totally. With you and yeah. Brazilian Playing Brazilian music and, and uh, yeah, fell in love with stuff. that and started awesome. singing a bit as well yeah. then, so. Wonderful, yeah. so cool. And now, like, uh, you're doing a lot more singing at the moment, and like, uh, yeah, am, singing so and playing the violin at the same time, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, with my band, um, with the Stump Hour, obviously, yeah. it's become more and more yeah. singing as well. So, that happened Beautiful. in the last maybe four years, especially. Yeah. Oh, wow. singing more. Awesome. So, wow. yeah, well, I love you have such a beautiful voice. Amazing. Thank and you. all like the French repertoire, you know, you do so well. Because you speak French as well, right? I do. Yeah. How do you, why, why do you speak French? Did you live in, so, in France? So, yeah, when I was about to turn 14, I decided I wanted and wanted to go to the French part of Switzerland and live with my my grandmother, my oh, maternal yeah, grandmother. Oh, beautiful. And I went to school there for six months and learned French. And then it was a place I always spent my summers back in either Switzerland or in France. 
um, following that. So wow, yeah. that's so cool. So I love singing in French. Yeah, it's but beautiful. But I love singing in other languages too. I'm yeah. just not fluent, obviously. Yes. <laughs> Portuguese is the hardest one to sing. In, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tongue twisters. Oh a lot of gosh. weird sounds in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's horrible. It's like, really uh, difficult. A lot of uh, nasalities, right? Yes. I got this noun, yeah. vão, vem, pão. Yeah. It's really difficult because some, sometimes I feel like oh people must thinking that I'm a really nasal singer and you know, <laughs> I'm thinking like this but it's not it's just a language. It is. It's really difficult. French is a bee. They're, they're, they're a little bit actually. That's true. As well, right? No, yeah. that's very true. Yeah. That, um, yeah. And it's fun, and I think that's why I love exploring songs in, in different you know, languages. Their yeah. original languages yeah. too. I like singing in Italian, even though I'm certainly not fluent. But yeah, yeah. it's fun. It's and totally. It's yeah, so cool. Trying to yeah. learn how to pronounce it properly. It's fun. <laughs> well, the bosses, if you sing them, yeah. it's so much nicer in obviously Portuguese. In Portuguese, in of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, name. there's a story that Tom Jobim, when um, he gave the rights, I think, to this uh, publishing company in the US, and they used this specific guy to write all the English lyrics. I didn't know that. And he didn't really like them. So he, like, some of them, he rewrote it. Like, there's a bit of a. Uh, Ah. Yeah, he wanted to work with this other guy who who actually wrote some of the English translations and did a great job, but he wasn't allowed to publish them because Tojobi already had given the rights to this other publishing company. Oh, I know, no. yeah, and he was like, no, not very happy, not very happy. No, with it. <laughs> Some of the translations are so bad. And they are, right? It's, like, oh, it's tricky, it's super tricky. Yeah. So tell me about your band, like with the stamp and stuff. How cool, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's been gorgeous. really fun. So the formation it's in now has been, well, we've had the same band members now for the last three, three and a half years. Yeah. And have just done our second album. Wow, and, that's awesome. Congratulations. Um, quite a few, you have to hear it. It's yeah. Quite a few Brazilian music on oh, there. Oh, really? Band, awesome, course. cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, Eddie, yeah. you were my gateway into Brazilian music. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> no. play any of it before. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we oh. fell in love with a lot of, we've got a uh, forho on there and a. Oh, awesome, great. Shoro as well. We just love this. Yeah. Is the shoro? Yeah. We play that. Oh, Would we don't actually, mention? we don't play that one on the album, but we always play that one. That will be on our next one. Ah, Princess Inia, the shoro. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. Am I pronouncing yeah, it properly? Yeah, perfect. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, and so it's a bit of a mix. We obviously play. We call ourselves World Folk Jazz yeah. um, Group. A uh, World Folk Jazz Group because we yeah. play music from all over the place, but then yeah. put our own stamp on it, I guess. Yeah, and beautiful. obviously, the Brazilian music is so usually percussion um, based. Base, yeah, that's true. But we obviously don't have any percussion instruments, yeah. so we. But oh, you have a guitar, and no? I got like a guitar yeah, and a chord. And yeah, we try to incorporate hitting our instruments. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, cool. Awesome, like that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, so the album is. A Quite a lot of French material, and then a couple of bossas. I do please Oh, yeah, and I love that one. It's beautiful, yeah, totally gorgeous. And um, yeah, and then we play some a couple of Swedish ones as well oh, because yeah, that's awesome. my background, obviously. Yeah. So and you've been music. composing, I hear. Um, as a group, yeah, yeah cool. we come with that's we've come, we've established kind of a little bit of a system where we come with ideas and then we uh, work on them as a group. Oh, awesome. it's really fun. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, we've yeah. always done that with arrangement. Um, arrangements before. But yeah, sure, yeah. cool, excellent. Now it's, yeah, beautiful. Something we do as a group, awesome. which is really fun. And yeah, what's um, your like? What what do you do you think your your influences is in the in the composition aspect? Like, are you writing the lyrics? Are you writing uh, the melodies? So far, I'm not. I haven't been very confident with writing lyrics yet. Mm -hmm. I guess it was because I'm still trying to figure out what language I would write it in <laughs> as well. <laughs> totally but, the feeling, yeah. Um, but yeah, usually I come with um, because my instruments. Melody, a melodic mm, instrument. Yeah, sure. I don't usually think of chords. Yeah, of course. Very much. Yeah, yeah. So I leave that to the guitarist and the accordionist in the band because they think in chords yeah, a lot more. Sure, sure. So for me, it's more just coming with melodic ideas yeah. or things that I hear and coming with them. Um, yeah, so I'll, my contribution so far has been a lot of, um, I guess, melodies based on Swedish folk music. Wow, as well, really? Yeah, beautiful. That I've yeah. Internalized and then. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Good on you. That's good. But it's yeah. really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I like. I love this uh, kind of exploring the folkloric elements of, uh, well, I guess, of my culture, Brazil. You know, it's like taking that and trying to kind of reharmonize it under different chords and trying to yeah. come up with uh, yeah different ideas based on those kind of melodies that we heard as as, as little that's kids, it. right? It's yeah. It's just super in, cool because it's, it's in us. You know, it like, is. That's exactly yeah. it. It's fun. And well so it comes up so naturally. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool. But yeah, no, it's really fun just being able to collaborate as a group. It's yeah, actually yeah. really fun because people come with so many different um, 
I'll come with a melody and then it will be so transformed or built on. Yeah, know? totally. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a really fun thing to explore, I think, as a band. Yeah, um, yeah. Writing so. music together. So sometimes we'll come in with our own um, material, but a lot of the time we like to work together. So yeah, yeah. Well, well done. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, like, as a violin player, have you had much experience like working in orchestras? And I yeah? do a lot of my... Yes, I do definitely still do a lot of classical playing. I play yeah. with the Queensland Pops Orchestra and oh, I play awesome. with um, the Australian Session Orchestra. Um, just freelance, playing yeah. a lot of string quartets. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so I love doing, I still love see, obviously see, playing yeah. classical music. Yeah. But I think I've just um, digressed and love yeah, play more, I guess, playing a little bit more. Cool, yeah, you know. jazz and yeah, just jazz. those elements more now. Totally, I think. yeah. But yeah. I, I will always continue to play classical, to play classical music. Yeah, be beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I love gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. And uh, is he, do you find there uh, is classical music, because we, I guess, the, no, we, the world has this kind of view, oh, classical music is it's a lot more serious, it takes a lot more dedication, you know what I mean? Like you have to be a lot more focused on your on your practice, and uh, which I find it, you know, like the contemporary stuff, jazz or popular music, whatever, you still need that dedication if you want to if you want to be a good musician, Absolutely. right? Don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really interesting. But, yeah. I think it all. I exactly what you're talking about yeah. made an appearance in. I'm finishing my masters at the moment, oh, wow. which changed um, thank you, changed <laughs> path a lot. Yeah. It was originally going to be in tango music, and yeah. then I decided to make it much more about what I'm actually doing now because. Yeah. Um, as a musician, especially here in Brisbane, we tend to do a lot of different styles of music and yeah. playing a lot of different contexts, musical yeah. contexts. And so I, it's about that and about me transitioning from being a classically trained violinist to working professionally yeah. as awesome. a singer. And how did I learn to do that? Yeah. Because I didn't originally have any training as a singer and so on. Um, and it's also looking at exactly that, the differences in practice mm -hmm. approaches to, are, yeah. to how I practiced as an undergraduate you know, sure. classical violin student yeah. and the number of hours I spent on you know really practicing technical accuracy yeah. and and, um, and now it's like a whole new world has mm, opened up because yeah. it's so different when you're given the freedom to improvise and the new skills that you have to learn to be able to do that Absolutely, and then, yeah. as you know from studying a bit of voice as yeah, well it's totally. a very different approach to practicing then as well because absolutely, it's an yeah. invisible instrument yeah invisible absolutely it's so hard the voice is just uh, another another game right like it, the piano it, you just really, press this, the exactly. thing like we can't press here you know just like and you have to kind of just think the adjustment or yeah feel exactly it. yeah. And it's such a different yeah, way to approach yeah, it all and totally. to learn to use that yeah voice exactly with your voice yeah. that instrument yeah. correctly like to trust your instrument you know yes. and understand that it's like it's you know it's like anything can can impact it you know if you if you'll be run down if you'll be tired you know if you've you got a cold hide it. you know what I mean like you can't exactly. hide it it's there do you exactly. know what I mean like if I've got a sore throat or a headache I can simply play my guitar quietly but you know singing Absolutely. is a completely different Both game so challenging and emotionally like Absolutely. I can I've been able to play the violin you know and cry yeah, yeah, and totally. feeling yeah. awful but you yeah. can't do that with singing no. it's such a exposed right? such an exposed it's instrument a, it's totally different and it, I think there's a lot of trust involved you know like I remember uh, uh, Irene, you know, did you just study yes, Irene as well? I yeah, did. yeah, she's a beautiful singing teacher from the car. She used to say, Eddie, singing is being being out of control with the plan, you know, because if you try to control so those notes cute. and those voices, then you know, things that's so funny that she said that to you because she said that was my biggest problem. I uh, really <laughs> I would focus on the perfection of each note sometimes yeah. more so than telling the story. And she'd say the same thing to me, just let go because she said, You're thinking, yeah. um, she would say that I'm thinking really, um vertically like the notes on the stage ah, okay, and really sure, sure, think, sure. focusing on each note yeah, and yeah, how yeah. it's coming out and she said yeah. you have to just again kind of just trust it and let it go and just think about the story you're telling when Absolutely, you're singing yeah. rather than each note and totally, I thought it's totally, so yeah. true but yeah. it's again it's such a different yeah. approach to music to what I've been isn't it interesting because it's like a, it's like the classical versus the contemporary like really the classical sometimes says this really about accuracy and technique and perfection yes, yeah. while the contemporary is about telling the More story expression. about the expression yeah, and the emotional and right it's funny because like, really when I kind of record my voice you know it just focus on accuracy and getting every note sure I'm the pitch, the pitch is right but like I don't like the tone you know I mean, the quality I can feel like there's mm. like something is missing but sometimes I think just a little bit flat do you know what I mean yeah. like it's not perfect but I can feel there's a lot more emotion yeah, it's really tricky yeah, right? yeah. No, it's so yeah, true it's so funny, yeah. and to be f yeah exactly and that to be a bit freer with them um, 
phrasing and everything is also something I'm not used to. So yeah. it's been really yeah, it's a beautiful wonderful journey. as a yeah, as a musician to explore the other world of music that exists. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome. and it's it, the same thing with Swedish folk music. It has to be played with a particular, you know, it's played in a particular style. It's not right. if I read the notes on the page yeah, yeah. and just play that, it doesn't sound. It doesn't right sound right. right. Yeah, so totally. Learning yeah, orally yeah. is a much, much better approach. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's it again. It's so different when it's an oral. Yeah, oral tradition. tradition and you yeah, have to learn exactly. You really need to learn it that way. You do. You do. Yeah, it's totally. Because there's all those subtleties that they, they you can't write it. You know yeah, I mean? that's there's it. the limitations and the of ornaments. Uh, and yeah, mm, right. It's, it's fascinating. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, like I'm so jealous of uh, of you and violin players. They can read so well, you know, because guitarists like we don't. We unless you go into the classical guitar path, which I did for a while, it was really it was really fun. Like, but if you're if you're a gigging kind of musician, like you, you know, you don't want to be there, you know, like on, sure. on the track, kind of, you know, you tend to memorize stuff more, yeah. just just reading the chords or something easier to follow, so then you can be really, I guess, present, you know, yeah, in, in, no, in, in sure. a performance. Yeah, it's cool. But I think reading is super important. It's really cool. I, absolutely. But um, then the flip side of that, which I've noticed when I play with jazz musicians or music or folk musicians yeah. or any, you know other genre than classical, I noticed yeah. that there's a lot more um, interaction when you play with yeah, someone, a lot of course. more eye contact, Absolutely, and a lot yeah. more listening to yeah. each other, totally. which I sometimes miss when I play in a string quartet because yeah. everyone's so busy Just so reading. There. Yeah, of course. And it's, you know, it's fun, but I often miss that. Um, yeah. That totally. moment of being present with whoever you're playing with, exactly, and actually yeah. interacting and feeding off each other. I bit. totally I mean, agree. Like I when I, yeah, when I play special. with people, like when I don't know the song very well and I have to be there reading, it's uh, I kind of miss the opportunity to listen. Because if yes. I start listening, then I you know I lose my place on the chart. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just gotta focus. <laughs> and I guess that's probably what happens today, you know? Yeah, to the no, string quartets, you know? It's true. I'm always <laughs> like sometimes, especially if it's a piece you've been playing, you have played a lot. In the yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And you like up, look up, and I'm like, no one's looking. <laughs> <laughs> no one's interacting with me at all. And I, yeah, I really have realized that more and more since playing with, yeah. with other musicians. Yeah, it's so funny, Who right? are not, you know, necessarily just classically trained. Oh, um, cool. And I love it so much more. I have, yeah, to me, it's a another mm. world that I, I really want to become more familiar with. But awesome. improvising, yeah. just being familiar with music from... You know, these other countries from Brazil, like I totally, love yeah. learning about the styles oh, awesome, and yeah. it's the whole world. Of yeah, there's a whole world of music, you know, I think yeah, you very know, each, each culture has incredible music. I think there's no, you know, I think there's there's a lot of bad music. <laughs> <but> <laughs> yes, that's true too. <laughs> but there's a lot of good music, you know, from all, all around the world. And I really believe in a sense of universi universality, you know what I mean? Exactly, like a, absolutely. You know, you know, we should be able to explore. But somehow, sometimes, it's, at the same time, I feel the society kind of like, they you need to be boxed into one thing, do you know what I mean? Like, okay, you, Eddie, you just play Brazilian music. You, Rebecca, just, do you know what I mean? You're, like, just a, you're a violinist. Or, yeah, yeah I mean, right, you're just, exactly. a, you know, like, it's like, oh, if I play guitar, oh, you're a guitarist, so you're a singer, do you know what I mean? And because I play, I don't just, just play three chords yeah, and sing, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. as I did, maybe, you know, you should just, say, you know, I feel the pressure, you know, I should just focus on the guitar, or I just, you know, focus on the voices, yeah, it's, it's a constant struggle, isn't it? Yeah, but I think it freedom. makes you a better musician when you are, you know, more well-rounded, I guess, yeah. when you have these other, because I think it, it affects your playing in any style yeah. like I feel like playing all these different all this different music and singing yeah. has changed the way that I even play classical music wow, and cool. um, yeah I just, yeah that's I think a good you point listen in a different yeah, way and absolutely yeah. so for me I think and even like the shows you know like the shows where you sit and just yeah just play for the sheer pleasure of yeah, playing yeah, together sure. and making yeah. music together I mean that's such a that was such a special um, experience for me because that mm. rarely happens in a classical world like right, yeah, you don't yeah. often get classical musicians who totally. just sit and have a jam yeah. together or yeah, play yeah. music just for the fun yeah. of it so yeah, that's I great. think there's, it changes you as a musician yeah yeah, so you moved out from your house, you know, like uh, for <laughs> two dozen no, Rebecca had this incredible house, this beautiful Koya, where we used to get together and play shorts until delay hours, and then we'd be scared <laughs> of the neighbors. <laughs> they all loved it. And I, got, I got complaints when I moved out. I was like, what is, no, we don't have any music on the street. So that was they, wonderful. they loved it. That but so we'll just great. have to, you know, yeah, transfer that it. to my new house now. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being here, Rebecca. Oh, it's a oh, pleasure. So should we play one more song? Yes. Beautiful. So
So we're going to do Feira de Mangaio, which is a forró, music from the northeast of Brazil, which me and yeah, Rebecca played a few times together. <laughs> but we haven't played this song in a while, so... <laughs> <laughs> different key. Luck. Yeah, different key. <laughs> I'll be fine. We'll be fine. Here you go. Um, dos, three. If you really liked it, please don't forget to subscribe, give it a like, and if you really, really, really like it, you want to support us, don't forget to go to the link down below and go to our Patreon account where you can uh, help us keep going. Thanks so much. See you soon.